a look through some of the notable golf courses Tom Fazio has designed over the years. Greyhawk Golf Course in Scottsdale, Arizona will host the NCAA Division I Women's and Men's Championships in 2021, 2022, and 2023. Of course, PJ National set to host the Honda Classic again next month, has been there since 07. Go to Las Vegas in Shadow Creek, hosted the PGA Tour CJ Cup in October. That one by Jason Kokrak also, of course, hosted the match between Tiger and Phil back in 2018. The Elotion Club hosted the 2019 Arnold Palmer Cup. How about that tee shot? Hmm. And Victoria National hosted the Corn Ferry Tour Championship in 2019 and 2020. And we welcome the, uh, do we say birthday boy here? We welcome the birthday boy onto the show. Tom, first of all, happy birthday. Uh, I want to start off, when you hear players like Webb Simpson last week, say it's more on the golf courses and design to change rather than equipment. What is your initial reaction? Oh, I think that's a long story. Uh, you know, that, that's kind of a story that we could write paragraphs and books about, and there have been. So I think everyone has a, uh, a little different opinion. Uh, you know, Webb is, uh, lives on one of the courses I've been involved with in Charlotte at the Quail Hollow, where the uh, PGA Tour event is played yearly. So uh, I'll get to visit with Webb about his ideas and thoughts, uh, certainly during that tournament. But again, it's it's an endless topic. Uh, it really relates to uh, uh, something uh, controversial to some degree, but also it gives us all a chance to have an opinion. And that's golf design is actually about opinions as well. Uh, so, uh, uh, but it's an interesting topic. Well, Tom, how about your opinion and your design and philosophy? How has it changed from the 1990s, say, to current day? Well, certainly it, it's only changed in one area, per se. It's changed for the elite player. It's changed for the tour player and maybe the college player. Uh, certainly, even my own sons uh, who are uh, in their 30s and now just reaching 40, when they go to a golf course, they only go to back tees. That's where they go to the back tee. Myself and my friends, we go, well, we used to go to the middle back, then we went to the middle, and now we're going forward. So hopefully uh, we live all live long enough. The goal is to get to the forward tees. That's the goal <laughs> in life, to live long enough to do that. So we hear a lot of talk about uh, how it's changed and how the golf courses are getting too short. 99% of the people I know don't talk ever say a golf course is too uh, short, ever. So, again, that's another part of the discussion process. Very important for one aspect of golf, certainly on the business and the professional side. But uh, I think sometimes we get carried away with it. Tom, I know you worked closely with Mike Strands back in the day. What would the world of golf architecture look like if Mike hadn't passed away at such a young age? Well, Mike was a very talented guy, uh, certainly had great ideas and thoughts, and, and Mike was one of ma many talented people that works, had worked for me and continue to still work for me. So you see a tremendous level of talent. I'm not sure that it's changed, would change any differently per se. I think there would just be more golf courses, possibly designed by Mike Strance as a name. But as we've seen in the last 20, 30 years, this is my, I'm, I'm a, I've been in the golf design industry for six decades. So uh, certainly uh, a lot of people have come along and a lot of new people will come along. And that's part of the process of, of uh, especially in the growth times. When I started my career in the mid 60s, We've had approximately 6,000 golf courses developed in the continental United States since the beginning of just my career. So obviously a lot of people have been involved. Most underrated golf course in terms of the way it was designed and how it's held up to the growing distances in the world. Certainly Marion Golf Club. I, I think when you, I think of that, you think about past U.S. Opens. We, we hear about what happened at Wingfoot this year and the length and the distance, and you only have to go back to, thir I believe it was 2013, uh, the Open at Marion that uh, uh, was one, I believe it was either one over par, and I think there were just two players that were under par uh, in, that, in that field. So uh, here's a golf course on roughly 90-plus uh, acres, uh, around around 7,000 yards or somewhere in that uh, distance, and it held up to the great players of the world. Now, certainly technology has allowed the golf ball to go a little bit farther since then, uh, so there's some issues to that degree, 
But, uh, but I think uh, Marion is one that shows how a golf course can be set up, designed and played, and still be uh, strong for the best players today. Justin Rose did win in 2013 at plus one with two of the finest shots you'll see on 18. So, Tom, you mentioned your sons. You've been known to take annual buddy trips to Ireland with them. They're strong players in their own right. What's a favorite memory from those journeys? Oh, gosh, we have so many. And one of my favorites would have been with uh, Wayne Heisinger, who was uh, a very pro uh, uh, athlete guy, who owned sports teams and football teams, baseball teams, hockey teams. And he loved it. When he got older in life, he loved the game of golf. So he would uh, load up his airplane and take loads of people to Ireland every year to play golf multiple times. And Dan Marino and his son was one of them, uh, usually in that group. And we'd go to Waterville, Ireland. To play in a three or four day event with uh, on that particular flight, it would be 10 fathers and 10 sons, and uh, it would be the chairman of a major U.S. corporation and someone who was just a, a landscape architect uh, or a golf architect like me uh, and our son. So it was a conglomeration of a lot of people that would have lots and lots of fun and a lot of singing would go on in those events. <laughs> it sounds like a lot of laughs, Tom. All right, one serious question. One course for the rest of your life and why? Well, for, you know, I, I get asked that question a lot. I honestly don't have an answer to that because, you know, the game of golf is so fabulous. There's so many great uh, environments. It depends on what part of the country you're in. You know, basically, if you're in California, if you ask that question to a Californian, it's generally going to be a Cypress Point or a Pebble Beach because they're the known, known ones. If you're in the East Coast, it's going to be Augusta National or Pine Valley or some combination of maybe Shinnecock if you're a New Yorker. But if you didn't grow up in New York, you wouldn't know the Long Island great golf courses. So we're so blessed to in America to have roughly 14,000 plus golf courses. And there's so many. Uh, you know, per, now, personally, I've done several hundred of them. My goal is to... Um, create and, and fulfill dreams of people. I get people that call me and say, I have the best piece of land you've ever seen. I want to build the greatest golf course ever. And whatever you want to do, let's get started and we're ready to go. So that's kind of a fun thing to do. It's a fun job.